It's Bates' book. I brought this up a few times. It's a really great book. I would say it's got to be a top three salmon related books. You know, maybe it's top five. I think it's top three because of all the pattern. I mean, it's all the recipes it has, the dressing. It's really incredible. Now, yes, 90% of it is is you know, elaborate salmon flies, but there's dry flies and there's also nymphs in here. And that's the one I want to tie right there. It's a Charlie DeFeo pattern called a, a gold nymph. Not a very descriptive name, <laughs> but that's what it's called, gold nymph. And you can see it's on a really big hook. It's a small fly and a big hook, which is, you know, that's a standard salmon fly thing. And that's how I'm going to tie it, but I have to say, I mean, I, have, I don't see any problem with using this for trout. I would just switch the hook to a to a size 10 streamer hook. That, that would probably be the best idea. And I will probably do that. I, I'm, I, I will tie a few of these up for, for trout fishing. I think. I think it would be... I think it would be cool to fish them for trout. It's different. It's got some cool things in it. For, um, it uses... What, what's really cool is it uses uh, the feathers from uh, Jungle Cock Neck. The feathers that you don't normally see people use. Actually, you rarely see them used. Uh, we're just going to use this, this 12 o Georgia BG Black. You could also use like a yellow, and the tag is, is yellow floss, but if you wanted to, like if I was tying these for fishing, I would just use the yellow thread and not even go with the floss. But we're going to do the floss on this one. First thing though is, is it's silver in the back. Silver flat tinsel. So I'm just using a, a real small one here. And you would get it. Yeah, I think that's good right there. And um, I don't think we need super glue. I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. I think it'll stay fine for now. Got to be careful with this. When you use a really small tinsel, um, you could very easily not get it close enough. That can happen, so I just got to take a look. Yeah, that's good. Yellow. I'm just using this Danville four strand. Just using one strand. This one strand might even be too much, to be honest with you, but... Just try and be careful. Now we're going to leave the tag about as long as the gold part of the body. It even might, might make sense to use yellow thread even if you are using the floss just so it covers up. But this thing is so small that you know, once we put on the peacock it's going to pretty much cover most of it. We'll cut this. We want to make sure it's it's built up pretty good. When you wrap that peacock it's it's got to look really full. Uh, but first the tail, bronze mallard, uh, it looks like they got about four, four or five feathers. Yeah. I'll use something like six. I just pulled it off and I clipped off the skin. And if you, if you give it a little twist, it'll kind of just mix them and roll them up. About, yeah, the hook is good. Yes, it's all right. Again, we cut this to the the gold body part, and I think that's all right. I 
may even go back here and quit one turn. Just to spread it and lift it. That's good. Okay. Um, peacock. So, uh, on a peacock, this is where the eye would be, right? And as you get further, closer to the eye, the, 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 the hurl is bigger. Now, normally, if you look at one of these, the hurl on the top is going to be larger than the bottom. But when you get close to the top of the, the stem, it's fairly close. But if you go down to the bottom, it's not that close. The hair on the the hurl on the bottom is maybe only half the top, which is important because if you want to do something like I'm going to do now, you want uh, you want peacock hurl that that is only on one side. Really, it's going to make it a little bit neater, and you. What you do is you, you tie it on so that the hurl is pointed down. And then you just you bend it up and you wrap it. And what that's going to do is, is that it's going to allow you to wrap it and it, it'll give you a... It won't be all crunched up. That's what you're looking for, just something that... It's, it's, it's a little bit different than ostrich. It's not totally different. It's easier than ostrich, that is for sure. Now we'll just clean this up here. If the hurl is leaning the wrong way, just take your finger and push it back. Right. Now the body. The body. Well, the, the next part of the body. It's oval gold, and I'm using a real small one, real small oval gold, and I probably wouldn't use an oval gold if I was fishing this. I'd probably just use a flat gold. Now, when we put this in, I'm going to try and get it on the bottom. Pull it in so that it's the, the length of the body. Now, getting it on the bottom is actually really important. Maybe not when it's this small, the the, the oval tinsel, but usually it's pretty important because if, if when you look at the top, you want to make sure it's still round. If you got it on the side, it's going to like bump out weird on the side closest to you, the, the side that you tie it on. So putting it on the bottom matters. Now. Just gonna double check this. Yeah, it's good. And we just gotta take our time and make sure these turns are really close. The tighter you make these turns, the better. I mean, it's really it's gonna look a lot. It's gonna it's gonna look really good if they're close. If there's a space, yeah, it's gonna stick out. Especially when you got this this black thread underneath it uh, and when the oval is this small. I would suggest if you're worried use a like a like a tan thread. Alright, so we cut this there. Now I'm gonna run this up and then back. Now the next part is peacock again, but I want to make sure that this is heavy enough here so that when we put it on, it's like a very prominent part of the of the fly. Okay. We're gonna go and we're gonna take it from the top because we want it to be pretty heavy. Now I'm gonna even take three. Yeah, that's probably good. And we'll tie it in at the tip, but we'll cut some of this off. Come on, get in there. 
there. And I'm just pulling it in so that Should have mentioned the hook that I am using. I'm trying to trying to keep it a, a little bit classic. It's a mustad. Uh, it's a very wide gap on a maybe a I don't know maybe it's a, a four gap, but it's a eight length. I wish I knew the number of this. I only have one of these hooks. <laughs> now, the wing. The wing is that part of that jungle cock that you don't normally see. And it's this right here. See it right there? See that? The black feather with the... It's almost like a reverse badger, right? Badger is usually white with a black center. That's black with a white center. I'm going to show you on an actual neck. Yeah, so it's like this. See that? See the feathers there? There's the, the eyes. And then down to the bottom, obviously, going to be the smaller ones. It's cool. That's one of the reasons why I want to tie this, because it uses feathers that you just don't normally see being used. It's it's really cool. Now the ones that they use, they uh, let me see here. I'm just gonna get ones that are the same. Yeah. Now these are pretty big, but we're gonna take most of it off. Let me look at the picture actually one more time. Yeah. yeah, they got it back. You know, touching the the butt there. And they got it sort of on the side too, so let's let's get some of this fluff off. I think I'll do one at a time here. They kind of they it they kind of have it so that you can see. Well, the the one in the picture is tied by Charlie DeFeo, so I mean we can assume that it's correct, <laughs> right? We can assume that it's 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 right. So he's got it maybe not that long. Yeah, and then he's got this one over here like this. Just take off the hair more. If you tie it, you gotta really kind of tie it right onto the stem, and the reason is is because if you tie it onto the the, the actual fibers, it's gonna make the head like gigantic. Yeah. So in the thing it says it's tied on like a roof. Let's take a thread turn away here too. I'm just pulling it in to make the length the same. Just gotta be careful. Good. Alright, now let's clip these off. If I was fishing this, I would fold them back. But we're not fishing this one. Now, we'll do the throat while we're here. The throat is again bronze mallard. I'm just going to take off a big, big piece and then I'm going to cut the skin off and then I'm going to take it and just fold it over you know, onto itself. And then it's not crazy long. Some 
wax oh. and I gotta make sure that this throat is in the center Just give it a little tweak that's good now I'll go to the eye and try and I don't know if you're looking to save turns just make sure that every every turn matters and you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing which is covering up cut ends yeah Can I tweak this throat again there we go and Just a little bit of super glue. Uh -huh. Looks like there's just a little, couple little tiny hairs that came off the, the jungle cock. Risky trying to cut those off, but that's it. All right, Charlie DeFeo's Gold Nymph. It's a fun one. It's different. It has some some different stuff going on, which I like. I like that. Alright. Alright. Thanks everyone. See ya.